Welcome back to part 3 of the tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of scripting for PS4 Macro. For a quick recap, PS4 Macro is a utility program that allows you to record your controls for PS4 Remote Play. The program was first created in part 2 of the tutorial, which is now an ongoing project maintained by me. You can find the links to the GitHub repo in the description or check out the video of part 2. As of version 0.3, we can now write our own custom code to be executed by the program. And that will allow the bot to handle a much more complex situation than using macros alone. For example, we could write a script for farming in an RPG game, or even aim bots in a shooting game if we wanted to. However, in this video, we will focus only on the basics of scripting in PS4 Macro, and we'll go deeper into more fancy stuff in the next video. Start with Show Studio and create a new class library project and give it a name. I'm going to rename the class to Script, but you can name it whatever you like. Then we'll go to add some references. Click on Browse and select PS4 Macro API.dll from the PS4 Macro folder. We also need to select system.drawing because we'll be dealing with images. In the class, include the namespace by adding a using statement in the first line. After that, we will extend this class from script base, which is an abstract class that includes some variables and other useful convenience functions that our script can use. Then we're going to create a constructor. Inside the constructor, we can set the name of the script and other settings through the config property. Next, we'll override the two methods from the base class and write our own custom code in it. The first method is start, which will be called when the user press play. The second method is update, which will get called every half a second by default but this value can be changed in the config property. To test the script, we'll use DTA5 again and make the script change the weather as fast as we can. In update, start by creating an int variable called wait delay and set it to 10 for a 10 milliseconds delay. After that, we'll press the combinations for the sheet. To do that, we'll have to call the press method and pass in the dual shock state using the short syntax then call the sleep method which we will pass in the wait delay variable. I'm going to speed up the video to do the rest. To test the script, we have to build the project which will give us the DLL file in the debug folder. And then we're going to open it from PS4 Macro. When you open a DLL file, it will automatically switch to script mode. To start the script, press play and remote play should be brought up to the front and resized to a square window. Next, we're going to work on scenes. Scenes are like snapshots of any frame in a game that we are trying to detect and let the script react to it. It is useful when you want to navigate through game pop-ups that shows from time to time like when you receive a reward or when you level up in-game. In this case, our scene is going to be the interaction menu in GTA 5 just for a proof of concept. Start by creating a class called Interaction Menu. Then subclass it from the Scene class. We're going to use the tooltip to fill out the required methods. The name here is the name of the scene, and we're going to use the short notation for it. The first method is match, 
In this method, we should return true if we are confident that the game is currently at this scene. This can be done by calling match template and pass in either a pixel map if you want to test a single pixel or a rect map if you want to test an area, which is like finding a smaller image inside an image. If this returns true, then onMatch method will be called right after, which we can do whatever we want here. As an example, we're going to make the strip look for the interaction menu and change the value of quick GPS. So we can check for the top bar and we can also check if the top menu is highlighted, just to be safe. The key is to choose an area that doesn't move and it should be unique to other scenes that we might have. We can take a screenshot by going in the tools menu or control tab on PS4 macro. The screenshot will be saved in the folder next to the exe with the timestamp as a file name. Next, I'm going to open the screenshot in paint.net to crop them. But you can use Photoshop or any photo editing software. While cropping, we're going to save and also take note of the location and the dimension of the area. Now that we have all the images cropped, we will make a hash of these images. We can use a tool inside PS4 macro by going to the tools menu or press Ctrl I. Here we can drag the images into the boxes and calculate the hashes. If we drag in two images, we can also compare them to see how similar they are between 0 to 100%. Also, take note of the hashes of the images as we will be using it later. This functionality is taken directly from this project, which uses perceptual hash algorithm to make a hash from an image, which can be used to calculate a distance between two images. You can check it on GitHub for more details. Now that we have both the area and the hash, we can create a rect map to store this information. We'll start in a static variable. Then, we will check these variables in the match method and set the tolerance to 95% out of 100 for the first one, and 92% for the second one. In onMatch method, we will simply press right on the D-pad, followed by X, so that it will select a new location for the GPS and close the interaction menu. Now back in the main class, create a list of scenes to the config in the constructor and add the scene to it. Then change our update method to call handle scenes. We can also pass in a callback and use the variable for printing the result to console when the scene is matched, but this is optional. Finally, we can build the project and open it with PS4 macro. As you can see, every time I open the interaction menu, the script will immediately select a new location and close this. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and find it useful.
If you do, please give this video a like and also subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next tutorial where we will create an even more complex bot. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.